we are back to play one of our most famous videos, uh, most famous board games, 221 Beat Baker Street, which for some reason uh, keeps getting views on how to watch. We had an idea, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Uh, which is that most people play the game uh, against each other, and you know, there's different ways to play the game. One of them is the team co op one, um, which we can play with you guys. So, we're going to play as if we're playing the team uh, version of the game and we're going to read out the clues and in the team version of the game, of course, as you will note from the Rules of Fun video which I did about how to play the three different versions of the game, um, so you will know that in that version you don't need to roll dice and move around the board. You and your team get the case and you decide where you are going to go for your clues and you try and get it done and solved as much as possible. So first of all, spoiler alerts, if you are going to play every single game in 221B Baker Street, spoiler alerts now, because we are going to go from case 70 and depending on how much fun we have and how, <laughs> how well we do together, uh, we're going to go to case 75. So the last five cases for these videos, we're going to play with you guys. You guys can play along, but if you think you'll get through all the cases by yourself and you don't want any spoilers, stop watching the video now and go play it yourself because it's a great game. If you're still sticking around and you want someone to play 221B Backstreet, welcome to our house. We're those people. Um, we're going to kick in. All right, so all you need, she is the scribe. Valerie is always scribe. She writes things down furiously. So what I'll get Valerie to do is as she writes down the important things that she takes from a clue, I'll get her to tell us so you can listen in verbally and see what she's writing down so you don't have to try and read her writing. I will read out the case, but I'll also put it up for you guys to read as well. And let's get started. Yeah. Case number 70. I, uh, you know, forewarning, I take more notes than are probably necessary, so you don't have to do as I do. Mm -hmm. um, and you can always read the case notes. Yes. At, no matter what um, at part These of the game. These case notes, you can yep. read at any stage you want to refresh yourself. I'm already picking up our first card and seeing that the, the details go all the way to the other side. So that's going to be, be one of those cases. <laughs> um, but you can't read the clues again. Once you've got the clues and you tell your teammates and you sort it out, snap, the book goes shut. You can't read those again. So, case number 70. The St. Pancras Mystery from the Journal of Dr. Watson. Oh, St. Pancras, no less. Rereading my notes of the cases in which Sherlock Holmes was involved in 99, it has occurred to me that I have been amiss in not telling the full story of the St. Pancras mystery. Holmes's part in the case had been interrupted when we were caught up in the affair at the Shulscombe Old Place. At Shulscombe Old Place. That's a really hard one to spell. S-H-O-S-K-O-M-B-E. <laughs> Shulscombe. Readers may recall that Holmes had been asked by Inspector Merivale to examine the cap which had been found beside the dead policeman. The blobs of glue which Holmes had identified under the microscope had seemed to seal the fate of the suspect, a bitch of frame maker, outside whose place of work the policeman had been found, and who in the very nature of his business habitually handled glue. The case is instructive, for it demonstrated a side of my friend's character which had been overshadowed by the more traumatic events which had established his reputation among the public. Holmes himself firmly believes that I am at fault in this matter, and I welcome this opportunity to redress the imbalance somewhat. For in this case, it was not mental agility and physical courage, lightning deduction or deep thought which brought Holmes to the solution, but self-doubt and an awareness that the life of a man would be weighed in the scales against his own evidence. Whew. <laughs> Bit long-winded, Mr. Watson, but uh, carry on. The facts of the case were simple. The policeman, Constable Fleming, had been found dead inside the premises of the pawnbrokers when the proprietor opened the shop at the usual time. The constable had been killed by a heavy blow to the head, and the brown cap was lying beside him. Reporting the incident to the police, 
the pawnbroker pointed out that the cap appeared similar to the one worn by Nicholson, a man he employed to make up picture frames for him. Nicholson had been discovered in his lodgings fast asleep, despite the late hour of the morning. His landlady confirmed that she had heard him come in early in the morning. Nicholson had not denied this, but was unable to offer any corroboration for his story that he had felt odd in the night and went for a walk like. Might, let me try that again. I'm going to do a proper Nicholson. Mm. Felt odd in the night and went for a walk like. Oh, that's perfect. Right? There you go. So, if Nicholson was not the killer, then A. A. Who did murder Constable Fleming? B. How? And C. Why? The game's afoot. All right. So really, that's all you need to write on the front. I just take a look at it. Yeah. Um, when you start the case, normally you write those three things, but Valerie writes everything of interest down. What have right. you got of interest that you've written down, honey? All right. So we um, need to potentially start at the pawnbroker, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and the crime. And there was a constable, so probably Scotland Yard would be a place to visit. Yes, definitely. Um, is there something about glue? Yes, in the pawnbroker, the frame maker used glue and stuff. So, so potentially, could we go to the chemist? Oh, we could go to the chemist. Um, I like that. Put um, that down. Put for, that down. Yeah. Um, glue. Now, there was something else. Uh, Nicholson was in his lodgings. It doesn't tell us where his lodgings were, unfortunately. No. So, now, no. um, just reminding myself to later in this video remind you all that we are playing against the clock, against the clue clock. So in this particular style of game, okay, uh, there are rankings. So we're going to try and solve this case in as few clues as possible. Because if we get it in one to five clues, we are master detectives. And you're a master detective if you get it in one to five clues. Um, six to eight, sleuth. Nine to 11, detective. 12 clues, you're a gumshoe. 13 clues, Scotland Yard inspector. 14 clues, which is every place you could possibly visit on a map. You're a Watson. <laughs> Sorry, Watson. <laughs> so, even if you are not agreeing with anything we are saying while we are trying to solve this mystery and you have your own solution, maybe you've got a pen and pencil. Maybe you should get some pencil and paper <laughs> and write down the information yourself. Go back and listen to it. Write all the information down. Um, or write along as you go. Yeah. Awesome. I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if you don't agree with us, just... Stick with it and we'll read who the killer and all the, the solution at the end and find out if you beat us. And if you did beat us, definitely let us know in the comments below and where we went wrong. Okay. First stop was the pawnbrokers, was it not, my lady? Pawnbroker. Pawnbrokers. Yes, Let's go. Okay. So we'll take him immediately there because we can. I'll flip over the case card and using today we have... Doctor Who Radio <laughs> Times postcards to make sure that we get the right number corresponding. The amount of times amount I've of times. read the wrong clue the for the amount. wrong case. Pawnbroker, 996. 996. Okay. And make sure to write down the whole clue because you can't read that again. Can't read it again. You might have written down the wrong part of it and you can't <laughs> go back and it's awful. Especially when you're in a team and your teammate tells you you're awful. 996, that's what I said, right? She wasn't even listening. I wasn't listening. 996 was what I said. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Um, ooh, okay. I'm going to have to do accents again. You ready? Oh, fun. Well, I do have a number of regulars over from the theatre, said Blake the pawnbroker. There's Mr. Bowman, likes the ladies. Mr. Adams, likes the horses. And Mr. Fletcher. Likes the bottle. Right? <laughs> I like to help them enjoy themselves. He finishes with an oily smile. Don't close it yet. Oily smile. That's this guy's deal. Like a snake oil salesman. Yeah. Um, sorry, I missed one. Mr. Bowman loves the ladies. Fletcher loves the bottle. And... Mr. Adams loves the horses. Adams. Horse track. I reckon. Or carriage works. Oh, I don't know. Sounds like a horse track reference. I reckon... Look, ladies, horses, 
bubble. I like to help them enjoy themselves. This guy is up to no good in the old pawnbroker. So what's going on, pawnbrokers? <sighs> Illegal gambling house. Mm. Oh, maybe he's a bookie. Oh, yep. Maybe he's, a bookie. he's up to no good. Absolutely, but they're a number of regulars from the theatre. Yeah, so we have another place to expect. Well, also, Bottle could be um, the boar's Bulls head. Place. Yeah, the, the pub. Um, I think... Oh, before we go any further, yeah. before we go, if you're someone that's got 221 Big Bang Street, you know exactly what we're talking about, obviously. But if you're not, let me just quickly give you a tour of London. Yes. Because you start at 221 Big Baker Street, you can't go back there until you solve the case, there's nothing to learn there. You've got the chemist, okay, mix up your medicines and your whatnot, news agents, locksmith. Then we got the park, okay, lots of people, Dally in the park, hotel, tobacconist, Pawnbroker, which we've just gone to, Carriage Depot, um, where you get your cabs and stuff from, Theatre, Boar's Head, which is a pub, the docks, the museum, the bank, and Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard might have some clues as well. Mm. Now, we've got another one to add. Yep. So are we going to stick with our original order, though? Are we going to go Scotland Yard, then the chemist? I would like Scotland Yard. Yep. And then, depending on what we find there. Mm-hmm. Chemist or the theatre next. Scotland Yard it is, ladies and gents. Did you agree? Do you have another idea? Are you ahead of us already? We'll find out at the end in the comment section. Scotland Yard is 912. 912. 912. <laughs> I'll move that piece over there. 912. 912, it says. Okay. 912. <gasps> Got to do accents again. Blimey. Glue it may be, said Nicholson, but it ain't the sort I use. Too soft. Nicholson sniffed. More like costumers glue, <laughs> I'd say. Now, I've said costumers there because um, there's a word that I don't understand. <laughs> What's the word? Costumiers? Maybe it's an accent thing. Costumiers. Costumiers. It's more, more like costumiers glue. I'd say C-O-S-T-U-M-I-E-R. Costumiers glue, I'd say. So, another direction for the theatre. The theatre. Through the theatre we go. Oh, she's always off like a shot, Sheila. There's a nice order to things which you go down logically until she gets two clues in her own and is like, Bang it! Bang the list! <laughs> Screw the chemist! Let's get to the theatre! Although, what Just can we learn from the it. chemist about the glue that we don't already know? From the costume you made of course. Uh, that's, as soon as he said it was too soft, I was like, is this unfinished, uh, mashed up horses that we're looking Well, about? there was a guy that is into horses. Mm -hmm. we're, so we're off to the theatre. Um, sorry, guys, if nice you were excited out. to get to the chemist, like I was. Hello. Well, well, I'm going to the theatre. <laughs> You go to theatre, you wait outside. <laughs> <laughs> the manager welcomed us effusively. Well, two gentlemen of your mention wear moustaches. Oh, two of the gentlemen you mentioned wear moustaches. So the theatre people wear moustaches when they're in the theatre, but they don't actually have them. Mm. Fools. Or costumes. Uh, yeah. Costuming glue. What if the glue, they're disguised? That's how the glue yeah. got on the, the detective hat thing. <gasps> Mustache glue. Mustache in a wig. Mm. Maybe they're ladies pretending to be gents so they can get into the. The amount of cross dressing this game has is superb. Shh, I've never played it before. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Look. Oh, costumes, the news agents might have news on horses. We've had three clues, right? Yeah, uh, yeah so we're at three. We two have two more. more. Um, and we're right. still master detectives. Right, so who's the killer, how, and why? I think it has some... Well, no, he died of a blunt force yeah. to his head, so we still don't know the how. Um, why is probably something to do with shady business... Um, but we, yeah, we're not even close to who the killer mm. might be. Um, so we need to keep going. Um, so we have, uh, yeah, so we've been to the pawnbroker, the theatre in Scotland Yard. Mm -hmm. Um, 
we know that Fletcher is into the bottle. Adam into horses mm. and Mr. Bowman into the ladies. Um, I, so the boar's head, I think. Um, yes, I think uh, we can supersede the chemist because we, mm. we got the info on the glue. Yep. Um, boar's head, let's follow the bottle guy yep. and see how he goes. If anyone's got loose lips, it's the one who's got them wrapped around a bottle of scotch. Um, boar's head, here we go. 1,050. Now, Watson. What are Nicholson's most remarkable features? None, I replied, puzzled. Holmes's eyebrows lifted. Continued at the carriage depot. Sorry, can we go to the carriage depot? I think we have to expend another thing to get there. Cont it's continued at the carriage depot. So this wow. is part of a conversation that we need to hear the other half of wow. at the carriage depot. So Nicholson has no remarkable features. Nicholson is the frame maker. Yeah, and he has no remarkable features. Yeah, no remarkable features. Um, now we know that people wear disguises. Yeah. Why would you need a disguise if you have no remarkable features? Well, maybe Nicholson is wearing a moustache. Maybe, yeah, but he was the one that said the glue wasn't right and pointed towards the costumers. Hmm. One would think he's in the dark. So maybe this is that Nicholson isn't the killer. After all. I would, I would imagine he's in the dark. Oh my gosh, we need to go to the carriage works. Obviously carriage works. Obviously carriage works. That makes five. So um, I hope you're doing better than us because i got no idea. Nope. Who this killer is why they've done it, or any of the other things. So, Carriage Depot, 900. Clue mm. number 900. All right. Continued from the bull's head. Mm. Then what is that bushy substance over your upper lip? <laughs> Holmes inquired acidly. What is that bushy substance over your lip? It's a moustache. Why not a moustache? So... Who was he talking to? He was talking to someone at the pub. He was talking to Watson. So Holmes was telling Watson what are Nicholson's most remarkable features. He said he hasn't got any. And then he said, what's that on your lip? Moustache. So, the people with the fake moustache have beaten up the policeman, clobbered him with something, the moustache has fallen off. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's all we know. That's, that's, that's Who was in the moustache? Yep. Why are they killing the officer? And what they did it with? The three things that we actually need, we still don't have. Can I see the... Case? The case, please. <laughs> you certainly may scour the case. This is it. This is where we scour the case for that last little bit of evidence because we will no longer be master detectives if we don't get it now. What does the cap have to do with anything? The cap is where they found the glue. Mm. Imagine, because it was glued to a wick or something. Swell had been killed by a heavy blow to the head. The brown cap was lying beside him. The pawnbroker pointed out that the cap appeared similar to one worn by Nicholson. The man he employed to make up picture frames for him. Nicholson had been discovered in his lodging. The pawnbroker pointed that out. Mm. The pawnbroker is full of crap. Yeah. And he is the killer. His landlady confirmed that she had heard him come in early in the morning. Felt odd in the night and went for a walk. Sorry, say it again. The bone broke is the killer. No. Felt odd in the night. Felt odd in the night and went for a walk, like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and his mates from the theatre carried him home after getting him drunk or something. None of that is what we need to know. We are not going to be master detectives this time. Shall we do sleuth? Yes, we shall Let's continue. continue. We have six, seven, eight. We have three more clues and we still manage to be sleuths. So, oh. where shall we depart to? We've been to the ball set. We've been to the garage works. Mm -hmm. um, we need 
We've been to Scotland Yard? We have. We have. Carriage Works Hotel. Just do the chemist. Just... We said we were going to do the chemist at the start. Not? We're going to regret it forever if there was something great there. If not, our bad. Mm. Where would you have gone yeah. at this point? Um, do, 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 do. Chemist, 1007. 1007. <laughs> oh, yes, Blake said, preening himself. I always keep my windows clean. The more light I get in the shop, the less I have to spend on lightning. Is, is Blake the pawnbroker? So, less lighting. Where is Blake at the chemist? And this is a no clue. Yeah. Without it saying no clue, which sometimes it does, um, maybe it's just the chemist talking. Maybe it's just the chemist talking nonsense. Maybe Blake's just the chemist having a yarn. Damn you, 221P Baker Street, you're a bloody Oh, mistress. boy. Um, All right, we need to get away from this. Yeah. Blake character. We need that. Let's... Okay, so if... So, okay, let's go back to us thinking that um, the the person that's guilty mm -hmm. um, at the theater is um, into setting up bets, setting right? Bets, yeah. um, ladies, horses, etc. So they have the horses. Um, yes, but then there's also the bank. Somebody yeah, might be in bank. deep um, in terms of their betting. Okay. So, my yeah. vote's the bank. Ladies first. Yeah. I get the news agent after the bank. Let's go to the bank, everyone. Off to the bank. Nine, five, three. Yes, he does work late sometimes when there's an urgent job to be finished, said the born broker. He lets himself out. He has his own key. It's the pawnbroker. Let's go to the news agents. Sure. We are getting roped by this this game. We should go back and play case number one. That was an easy one. <laughs> news agents. 982. But then people might have done that one already, so it wouldn't be any surprise for them. 982. Come on. Here we are. Oh. No. What was our clue from the theatre? The manager says two gentlemen wear mustaches. Continued from the theatre. Oh. But not Fletcher. So this is just a series of conversations mm -hmm. that have been had. Okay. So I would say, based off of the glue, then it's not Fletcher who was into the bottle. Right. Right. Who's left? You've got Adams and Mr. Bowman. Horseman and Lady Man. And Lady Man. Horseman and, and Lady Man. There's always a good excuse for a murdering. Yeah. Maybe. But why did they murder the constable? No clue. <laughs> uh, no idea. Do you have an idea why they murdered the constable? Oh. We're going to have to keep going. We're going to have to keep going. I mean, unless we say it's Nicholson who's the killer. Yeah. Um, one of the picture frames over the head, but the why. One of the picture frames over the head. Uh, but it yeah. wasn't the right glue, but, it, you know, it was something hard that hit him. Key. He has his own key. Should we go to the locksmith? True. True. That might be something. That's okay. That. Um, we have 9, 10, 11. Three clues to go, and we're still at least detectives. Then we're really dredging the bottom of the barrel. We so might just have to guess it. Big. All right. Two, the locksmith. Shh. Okay. Out of the way. Um, ten, twenty-six. Ten, twenty-six. Locksmith. I agree, Mr. Holmes, said the locksmith. Those are traces of soap. Someone has copied these keys. Mm. So the locksmith has a set of keys. He, he wouldn't need them. What's he face? Nicholson has a set of keys. 
So he's got his own keys. Yeah. Someone else has copied the damn keys. So he's not the killer. Someone else has copied the keys. Now hang on, hang on, hang on. Hello, hello, hello. The Bobby, who's dead. Mm. Maybe he's in disguise? Maybe he's not a dead Bobby? Um, maybe he broke into the pawnbroker and then it is Nicholson trying to so why was he killed because they surprised somebody in the act come into the pawnbroker for whatever reason once he likes the ladies yep Mr. Bowman yeah so um, the other one is a lady who puts a moustache on so she can go to the theatre with him the intrigue no? Maybe? No. <laughs> okay, we'll get ready. Okay, we've got two more clues and we're still detectives. Yep. Moment. We've been everywhere. How have we not been everywhere? we got tobacconist. Mm-hmm. We um, have not been to the tobacconist. Is this a news agent? We've been to news agent. Uh, yes. Um, we just went. Um, no, we have not been to the tobacconist. Um, or, or the docks. Or hotel. The um, or the bank. Or the park. Or the park. Um... The picture maker went for a walk. Park. Walk in the fresh air. It says park to me. One more after this one. Come on, ladies. We got this. Park. 9.44. 9.44 it is. Killer clue. Finally. <laughs> well, uh, we should have gotten that probably at the beginning. Did you go to the park first? Uh, <laughs> You play this at home with the board at the same time and go, you idiots. <laughs> okay. Uh, killer clue. Arrows are his business. Didn't he have a bowman? Bowman? Yes. Bowson? What's all their names? No, Fletcher. But Fletcher. A Fletcher is someone who Fletcher's arrows. Right. True, yeah. true, 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 true. Give me true. Give me the it's name. Bowman and Fletcher. But Fletcher, sorry, does not have a mustache. Well, then he would need a mustache. That's why he he would would need need a mustache, because he doesn't have one. So the killer is Fletcher. He probably used a bottle over the guy's head. Because he's a fan of the bottle. I'm putting that down. I don't know if that's right. Um, (laughs) And the why. No <laughs> so he copied the keys to get into the pawnbroker. Yeah. Um, he's probably in deep, you know. He's been he drinking. By the bobby. And, uh, yeah, he was caught in the <gasps> Because he cleans the windows. Is he Blake? Did we miss that no, at some point? No. Well, maybe. Maybe the pawnbroker is Blake and none of us have picked up on the fact his name's Blake. But think about it. Think about it. Yeah. Think, think about it. Yeah. Yep. Come with me on this journey. Yep. Come okay. with me, ladies and gentlemen. So, Fletcher mm-hmm. has got the keys yep. after having a drink yep. with Nicholson, who wasn't feeling well. He pressed the keys into his soap, copied the keys. So they can rob the pawnbroker because pawnbroker man is running some shady bootlegging um, bookkeeping nonsense. So he's gone to rob the pawnbroker. Right? Mm-hmm. But the pawnbroker is so stingy, he cleans his windows like the blazers so that the light can get in. So anyone walking past the pawn shop, even in the dead of night, can see straight in that someone's robbing the place. And that caused the Bobby's attention. So he came in, caught him in the act. That's when he 68'd him, 86'd him with, with what? What did he 86 him with? Do we know what he 86 him with yet? I said a bottle. A bottle. I said, a bottle. I said a bottle, but... Um... Maybe a ledger. Something heavy. Mm, ledger. Bookkeeper. Yeah, he's, he's stolen the book with all the debts in it. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, we have one more place. One more place we can go to see if we can confirm oh, any of this. Um, did we go to the bank after all? Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've been to the bank. Chemist, carriage depot, locksmith, newsagent, park, pawnbroker, theatre, boar's head, Scotland Yard. Hotel or the dock? I'd say the tobacconist. What? Nobody has smoked anything in this whole story. I don't know. She just want to do the tobacconist just because? I mean, we're, uh, tell me your reasoning. Well, we said place of his lodgings, like maybe place of his lodgings is the hotel. 
Maybe. Okay. Hotel. It's my fault, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't get there. Hotel. Here we come. Let's have a look. Oh, this is getting stressful now. 931. 931. Let's do it, son. Oh. Oh. Wait. Continued at Scotland Yard. We're already at Scotland Yard. Oh, okay. Right? So Scotland Yard beginning was glue. It may um, it may be, but not the sort I use. Too soft. More like costumier's glue. You know, after that Shoskam affair, Watson, I feel it unwise to judge a man too soon. Let us talk to Nicholson. Continue at Scotland Yard. That was a no clue. You may as well have written no clue on that. Thank you, hotel. Well done. So, what we've got, potentially, is Fletcher mm -hmm. robbing the ledger yep. from everything he owes mm -hmm. to the pawnbroker because um, yep. he's in debt. But the pawnbroker has the window so spick and shiny that the Bobby saw him yep. in the act, came in to stop him, bludgeoned the Bobby with the ledger, big house, heavy book, um, killed him. His disguise fell off with all yep. the glue on it. That, yeah. Because he doesn't have a moustache, so he needed a moustache to yep. look like the other fellas. I don't yep. know. Um, so Fletcher, with the ledger. Or bottle. Or bottle, she always. <laughs> or bottle. <laughs> because busted in the act. Yep. Okay. Oh, you with it? You with <laughs> us? Are you rooting for us? <laughs> I hope so. Stop the video now Stop if you're still playing. Stop the video now if you want to go and play it yourself and do a much better job than we did. Case number 70, oh, solution to the St. Pancras mystery. Oh, I'll read the whole thing out and then I'll do what the clues are because that's how it should be. <clears throat> so there you are, a crime whose solution had depended almost entirely on the expert knowledge of the suspect. And all the more remarkable for that. Once Nicholson had suggested the glue I discovered was theatrical in nature, it was a simple task to forge the links in the simple. chain leading to the murderer. Simple miles. Blake. Blake's back. Blake the pawnbroker. It was <laughs> the pawnbroker. Bloody hell. Blake the pawnbroker gave me three names to choose from. People who worked in the theatre and were regular visitors to his premises. Each with a motive for theft at the very least. Blake also explained that Nicholson sometimes worked late into the night when urgent work was in hand, and therefore had his own keys. This apparently made the case against Nicholson stronger, yet gave me greater cause to doubt Nicholson's guilt. Consider this. It is known that Nicholson works late, that he is visible within the shop from the street, and that the local constable will pass happily by when he recognises the familiar cap and moustache of Nicholson. Uh, Nicholas has ah. the start. The use of such a disguise would allow the thief to work in peace and lay the blame firmly on Nicholson. This line of inquiry led me to the theatre. The need for a motive narrowed the field to three, and the need to wear a moustache produced just one name. Fletcher! <laughs> uh, his misfortune was that P.C. Flemings was new to the district and conscientious. He investigated the figure in the pawnbrokers and the evidence of theft which he saw sealed his fate. The solution is oh. murderer, Fletcher, reason, discovered stealing silver. To Where did the silver come from? Out. This game is sometimes know. out of like nowhere. Okay. Weapon. Lead piping. What? <laughs> we got one. We got one from three. We got no, we got two. We got Fletcher and Bobby caught him in the act. Well, yes, but he was stealing silver. I suppose we got Bobby caught him in the act. Good enough. Yes. It actually does say in this game, if you're close enough, it's good enough. You don't have to say with an actual six-shooter pistol. So you can say some sort of gun. where is the silver? Where is the silver? Pro okay. We went to the bond brokers. We went to the bank. Where's we the didn't go silver? to the museum. Oh, um, we didn't go to the docks, the museum, museum, or the tobacconist. Can we please now review all the clues? I, I, I wasn't going to be part of the show, but because we didn't solve the correct But well, I'm curious, um, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. So the docks would have had us...
believe. 971. The docks. Well, at least the reason for the robbery is clear, said Mary Vale. There's quite a bit of silver reported <laughs> missing. <laughs> So you did say docks at one point. We were at the pawnbrokers. Yep. And they didn't deem to mention that there was a bunch of silver missing when we were at the pawnbrokers. Why the docks? Bloody because that's where they would ship it from? Bloody hell. Uh, we still haven't got anywhere near this lead pipe. Shall we go to the museum? Yeah. 889. 889. You'd think the silver would Weapon be. Weapon clue. Oh, of course it is. Of Weapon clue. Of course it is. You wait till you hear it. It's so elaborate. After all the conversations and half conversations we've yep. it. A classical blunt instrument, heavy tube. Come on! Come on, a classical blunt instrument, heavy tube. This was this was a different kind of example of a. I'm a curious. Tube. You mentioned you wanted to go to the tobacconist. I did not. Tobacconist, yeah. Okay. That's Tobacco right. echo. Nine two seven. Was it does it make any sense of any of this nonsense? Probably not. Poor Fleming. It was his first week on the night patrol down St. Pancras Marybelle. Okay, that one would have been fine. But yeah, apparently we needed to go to the docks in the museum and it would have all made sense. Just the docks in the museum, after all the incident happened over here, nothing. Well done if you managed to get lead pipe <laughs> and you managed to get stealing silver from those clues that we you did You know what? Get. Well done to us. Well done. Two out of three-ish. We are terrible, terrible. <laughs> We're worse than Watson, apparently. Um, but hey, maybe the next one we'll be able to solve. Will you still be watching? <laughs> See us in the next case. Uh, Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.